You can grow your portfolio from $0 to over $20 million just like I did. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the five biggest lessons I've learned in my 20 years as a real estate investor and how you can apply these to your business so you can gain financial freedom quickly and easily. Stick around until the end of the video to hear about ways that I can further help you kickstart your real estate investing journey. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Before we dive in, I will say that my portfolio wasn't built overnight, but if you're willing to put in some time and energy and you have the right education, you can definitely achieve your goals faster than I did. Lesson number one, cheaper is not always better, but at the same time, expensive doesn't necessarily mean better quality. This can be applied to properties, renovations, and even our service providers, such as realtors, lawyers, accountants, and general contractors. In one of my properties in Red Deer, Alberta, I wanted to install a new sidewalk along the side of the property. My property manager collected three different quotes from three different companies. The quotes came back at $3,000, $6,000, and $9,000. There's a theory when it comes to renovations quotes, eliminate the high, eliminate the low, and go with something in the middle. But that's not always necessarily true. What you should do and what I did with these quotes is I eliminated the prices altogether and I started comparing apples to apples. Did all these quotes have a similar scope of work and were they using the same kind of materials? Were the projects going to be completed in a similar timeline? Is there a warranty on the product if applicable? And ultimately, what was the reputation of the company submitting the quote? What I realized when I looked at those things was that the $3,000 quote was actually comparable to the other two companies. So I decided to go with the least expensive of option. Duh. In the end, the job was completed on time and the quality of work was very well done and completed for one third the price of some of the other quotes that I got. Lesson number two, mistakes are unavoidable. If you've heard of a real estate story about a bad tenant or a renovation gone wrong, instead of having the mindset of that won't happen to me, develop the mindset that if it did happen to me, what would I do to solve the problem? Because problems will arise over and over as a real estate investor and the success of your real estate investing business will depend on how you handle those problems. Try to avoid making the same mistakes more than once and try your best to avoid mistakes that a lot of other people have made. There are a lot of mistakes in real estate investing that can be avoided through things like coaching and mentorship programs. So if you're just getting started as a real estate investor, I would highly suggest finding a coach or mentorship program that you can be a part of. On that note, if you haven't checked out my latest masterclass, I'll leave a link in the description below. Of course, I cannot talk about having problems as a real estate investor and not share a personal story with you in hopes that you might be able to avoid the same mistake. On our infill purpose-built triplex, we had an excavation error. To make a long story short, the architect made an error on the drawings and when the excavation was done, they went down too low and it compromised our neighboring property's footing with what's called the angle of repose. Because it was possible that we compromised our neighbor's footings, it was important that we moved quickly and efficiently. We brought in an engineer and they decided that we needed to install a small concrete wall to hold the soil on the neighboring property back. Once that small retaining wall was done, we could then continue with our foundation work. We moved quickly to get that done and everything back to normal as quickly as we possibly could. In the end, that mistake cost us about $5,000. But what I've learned as a real estate investor is that every problem is solvable. It's really just a matter of how much time it's gonna take and how much money it will cost. However, mistakes sometimes can actually benefit you in the long run. In this case, because we excavated down too far, we were able to actually build nine foot ceilings in the basement which has increased the value of the property. Lesson number three, know your numbers inside and out. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you as a real estate investor is keep the emotions out of it and strictly just look at the numbers. If you're working on a new type of transaction, for instance, if you've only ever flipped properties and now you're gonna get into more buy and holds or multifamily, you wanna work with someone who has been through those transactions and get them to show you their numbers and how they calculate returns. If you're used to analyzing a property in a certain way and now you're going into a new type of transaction, there can be all kinds of costs that you might not have factored in. You also want to make sure that you build in contingency after contingency. What I mean by that is that you want to have a buffer in all of your budgets. If you can't include the contingency in your numbers because that project isn't viable anymore, you need to walk away from that project. Lesson number four, cash flow is key. Cash flow can take on many forms. A lot of investors think of cash flow simply as the monthly revenue that you bring in on any rental property. But cash flow can also be gained from flipping properties from wholesaling properties and from private lending. But ultimately as an investor, you wanna shore up your cash flow first 
before you start shifting your focus to things like building your wealth and building your net worth. If you've got enough cash flow coming in on a monthly or yearly basis, that gives you the freedom to focus on the things that you might be more passionate about. But if you don't have enough cash flow coming in, you're always going to be chasing real estate investing and trying to keep your head above water as you try to move through. And that is never a good position to be in. Number five, teamwork makes the dream work. Focus on building an amazing team for you and the business that you're in. Then as you start to build your business and maybe need to hire on people, remember this slogan, hire slowly and fire quickly. One bad employee or a service provider can have a huge impact on your business. So take your time as you're hiring and make sure that they fit your team and your business model. It's also good to hire people that you get along with. You have to want to interact with them on a regular basis because we do that so much when it comes to real estate investing. I like to surround myself with like-minded individuals who also have a vested interest in helping me move my business forward. Surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to ask questions and also people who you can ask questions of when you need help. And of course, I like people on my team that have an abundance mindset. There is more than enough money out there, there's more than enough properties out there, and there's more than enough projects out there for everyone that wants to be a real estate investor. If you surround yourself with people that have an abundance mindset, you'll see your business move forward just that much faster and more efficiently. It took me about 10 years to acquire my first three properties. When I shifted my focus to cash flowing properties and adapted an abundance mindset, I was able to forex my portfolio in half that time. And now surrounding myself with like-minded individuals that have an abundance mindset, I was able to forex my portfolio in a single year. This is the power of mindset and collaboration. Real estate investing is not always easy, but it can be simple if you work with qualified people. Find a mentor or a coach who is doing what you wanna do and learn from other people's mistakes instead of having to make costly and sometimes catastrophic errors yourself. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna to continue to learn more about real estate investing, please hit the like button and turn on notifications. As well, check out my real estate investing masterclass at darrenvoros.com or use the links in the description below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on Tuesday.